welcome to my vegan kitchen. So today I'm gonna to make for you guys the ultimate sandwich. This sandwich is so good and the meat substitute, it just might surprise you. So I'm gonna do it now, stick around, I'll show you how. with a big old Dutch oven pot. So I'm gonna get that started. I'm gonna add about 12 cups of water to this pot. And I already started adding the water. All right, so we're gonna get that boiling because I wanna show you the rest of what we're gonna do it and that takes a little bit more time. So we're just gonna get that started. So by the time we get over here, this will already be boiling. So let's move over here because this is where our ingredients are. And guys, I am going to be using Satan. Satan is gonna be, not Satan, Satan is gonna be my meat substitute. I love Satan. And I'm gonna give you a tip. Do not purchase Satan in the grocery store. It is disgusting. If, you, if that was your first time ever tasting Satan or trying Satan and you hate it right now, you have good reason to hate it. It's nasty, it's disgusting. That's why I wanted to make this video because I wanted to show you guys how to make your own seitan. It's so easy, it tastes a thousand times better, it's so versatile, it's loaded with protein. It, it, it has like a maximum amount of protein. So if you wanna get protein in your diet for toned muscles, to lose weight, for anything like that, seitan is it because it has a lot of protein or foods that have a lot of protein, right? So it's really simple to make, it's not very hard. The ingredients are easy. It's a short list of ingredients. Here we go. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So I have a bowl. So we're going to grab ourselves a bowl. Nice big enough bowl because we're going to have to be able to mold this. All right. My gluten flour. This is what I'm using. Bob's Mill. We're going to use. And don't worry, guys. I will have all the ingredients listed below. So we're looking like we're using about mm, two cups. Two cups of gluten flour. All right, let's get that in there. Put a little bit back. I think I took too much out. All right, let's do about a tablespoon of chickpea flour. Again, I'm using Bob's chickpea flour. We're gonna get just a tablespoon of that in there. And then I'm gonna add, in this little container, I have all my ingredients. My onion powder, my garlic powder, my smoked paprika. We're just gonna place that right into the bowl with our products. All right, I'm gonna use my hand, just kind of blend that together. Just, just kind of mix that around, okay? Now, I have my water. This thickens up really quickly. So I'll have the measurements, like I said. You're not gonna pour all of your water in right away. We're gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna kind of mix it around, do a little bit, mix it around. And we might not use all of the water or we might use some of the water. A lot of times when I cook, I eyeball what I'm doing. So I kind of measure it out for you guys, but I kind of make it the way I'm used to making it, which is eyeballing it. So work with me guys, work with me. But this is really truly easy. I hope you guys really do this recipe because it opened up my eyes when I learned how to make seitan. I was just like, man, if more people knew how to make this, it saves you a ton of money, first of all. So I want you to see, already started to buy. It's not like your regular flour that takes um, a little bit more time to buy. This starts to bind up right away. Maybe I should have used a bigger bowl. <laughs> I told you guys to use a big bowl, but I used a, a smaller bowl and now everything is falling outside of the bowl. All right, so that bind up really quickly. So I'm gonna add the water to what I have in the bottom here and just kind of mix that together and then get my the rest of my seitan in there and kind of just get it all together, combine it, knead it. And this takes a little bit of kneading, so once it starts to bind together, I'm just gonna knead it in, probably for about mm, two minutes or so. All right, guys, so let me get, get to that, let me get to kneading that, and I'm gonna show you what to do next. So 
I've given it maybe two minutes of kneading. I'm gonna take my dough. See, this is what it looks like now. So it's kind of stretchy. It's kind of weird. If you've never touched anything like this, you're just gonna be like, what the hell? But it's so cool. This is like the coolest thing you can make. Yes, it takes a little bit of elbow work to, you know, kind of knead it, but this is so cool. All right, I'm gonna place it in a bowl and just let it sit here on the side. Because remember the water that I started boiling? We now have to add the seasoning to the water because this is gonna take a little bit of time to cook. So let me get my knife. All right, so let's add an onion. All right, guys, so I kind of rough chop my onion. I'm just gonna place it in my little carry-all. All right, just rough chop. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is gonna cook for a little while and this onion is gonna cook out to nothing, so it doesn't matter. We're gonna take our liquid amino aminos with us and we're gonna take our tablespoon and we're going right over here to the pot and it's perfect, perfect timing because my pot, come on in, just started to boil. So this is just my basic water. It's just boiling water right now. Like I said, it's like 12 cups of water. We're gonna put a tablespoon worth of better than bouillon sauteed onions. We're gonna drop that right in the pot. I'm gonna allow the hot water to kind of just melt this a little bit, kind of get it all in there, all the goodness, all right. I may have to come back to that. I'm gonna to toss in my onions. All right, and we're gonna season this up. Again, I'll have the measurements for you with some Bragg's liquid aminos. All right, let's get that nice and seasoned and back to bubbling. So the water, which is now a broth, is boiling. So we're gonna allow that to boil a little bit. And now I'm gonna show you what to do with the seitan, the dough that we've made. So it had a chance to kind of sit and rest while we did everything else. Seitan is, like I said, amazing because you can do so much with it. With this recipe, obviously, I'm gonna make um, little pieces to make a sandwich so you guys can see how that is made. But you could do so much with it, right? Um, I'm gonna take this blob right here and I'm gonna cut it into different pieces. Now, if you've seen different recipes done, everybody does it different, but I'm telling you, I have done this for years and it works every single time. And even skeptics, people that are like, I, I just, I can't eat vegan, I don't like meat, that is weird, I hate seitan. When they taste this seitan, they're always like, man, what did you do? Because yours is different. Most people tie it, I don't tie it to boil it. I'm gonna just cut it into the shapes that I want. And usually this will give you maybe almost a week's worth of meal. Yes, this ball right here can give you a week's worth of meals. So I kind of think about what I'm gonna make for the week. Here I'm gonna make some sandwich slices, like some meat, maybe like some like beef, like thin slices for beef. Um, to make the sandwich. I'm gonna make some uh, long shreds to make like maybe pepper steak, like, you know, pepper steak, uh, like kind of like beef and onions. I'm gonna have some pieces for stew. Uh, so I'm gonna have some like cubes for stew. I'm gonna do all those pieces now and then put it in my pot. So let me show you the knife. Everything's just gonna seem really gooey and just really weird, but let me tell you, it cooks out really nice. So you see how the paprika kind of, it kind of resembles beef, like just like beef. You see the little holes in it and then the parts that look like, and I hate to use this term because this is a vegan kitchen, but almost like the blood pieces in, in, in meat. It looks like meat. All right, so I'm gonna cut that piece right there. And I'm just gonna cut it probably just a little bit thinner just so we can have some sandwich pieces. So we have that piece, we have this piece. And I'm going to continue to cut my meat into the desired pieces that I would like for the week. Right, so I cut it all up. Come in and take a look. So I cut pieces like this that are more flat and thin. Those are gonna be my sandwich pieces. I cut more of cubes. That's gonna be for my um, stew that I'm gonna do another video so you guys can see. That's gonna be my stew. And then I did some strips because I think I wanna make some like, um, like broccoli, like steak and broccoli or beef and broccoli, right? So that's what I made here. So now we're gonna put it in the pot. 
So come with me. We're walking over to the Dutch oven pot that's been boiling. So to first add a little oil to the pot because we don't we want to give this some flexibility. We don't want the, the pieces to stick to each other. So we added a little oil to the pot. And now, and these will be sticking together. That's okay, just pull them apart, they'll be fine. Just pull them apart, you know, if they stick next to each other. And then we're just gonna drop them into the hot pot. I'm gonna get this pot boiling again, get it up in speed and boiling, because once we start adding the pieces, you know, the temperature drops, just drop it in. Don't worry about the way they look or anything like that, because you already cut them into the shape that they're gonna be. So you just drop them in. And the reason why I said to use a big Dutch oven pot, when this starts to boil, it starts to swell. Remember, it's gluten. So it's gonna start to swell and we don't want it busting out of the pot, right? We want there to be room so we can kind of move around. So I'm putting the pieces in, get my cubes, and I'm just gonna separate them and drop them right in there. See, they're sticking together. Don't worry, that, that means nothing. Just pull them apart stick them right back into that pot. This is so cool. I mean, the first time I made this, I was just like, what in the world? Guys, until it was cooked, I was like, what? Do people not know about this? Like, I have three days of meals here, you know? And in this bag of gluten flour, depending on where you buy it, um, Whole Foods is gonna be an arm and a leg. It's, I found it to be the most expensive at Whole Foods. However, like your Publix, your Kroger, I'm not sure where you are in the country or in the world, you can get that bag of gluten flour for maybe about $5. Can you imagine $5 and you can make meals for a couple of days? That's just crazy to me. That's just crazy because meat, you, you can't get a pack of meat for, for $5. So I'm just gonna toss these pieces in here that I cut into strips and see this one got stuck together just pull it apart like I said now we have a nice long piece of strip just put it all in there and it's going to start to boil all right all in let me get a spoon and this should start to boil up one more time and as it and this is what it looks like when you first put it in so you're like oh my god this is so much water this is going to take like you know, it's too much space. Mm -mm. In about 15 minutes, these are gonna start to swell and they're not gonna be able to fit in the pot. Now guys, this is where the real um, cooking begins. So we did that, which was really simple, right? We put the flour together, we mix it together. This part takes about an hour, 60 minutes. Put the cover on your pot, turn it down to a medium low so not medium, not low, just a medium low. We still want it to boil, but we don't want it to like overboil. Just like that and set your timer for 60 minutes because it's going to take that long to cook. Oh, did I do that right? All right, let's let's get our timer together. Start 60. Start. That's it. Walk away, clean up, leave it alone because when I when we come back, I'm going to show you the recipe to make this ultimate sandwich. And it's just so good. You're gonna make, wanna make it this weekend. Guys, while I'm cleaning up, I took a look at it and I was like, I just wanna give you guys a glimpse of what it's gonna look like because I don't want you to be shocked. The first time I saw it, I was like, what the hell? Come, let me show you. All right, I'm gonna take the cover off, all right? Don't get shocked, don't get scared. That's what it looked like. <laughs> I know, I told you, get a big pot because you want it to be able to move around and to spread. The nice part is when it's cooking like this, it doesn't stick together, but it does get pretty swole. It get pretty swole. And this is probably about 10 minutes in. So let me leave it alone and let it continue to cook so I can show you how to make this ultimate sandwich. Okay, guys? All right. All right, guys. So it's been an hour. We are back. Come on, take a look. Our seitan have cooked. This is what it looks like once it's done. It's a whole pot of seitan. So what I normally do now is just separate them, right? The ones that I wanna use for a sandwich like this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make grilled seitan steak sandwiches. So I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna place them right over here on my grill pan. I already have it started to get heated up. So I'm just gonna lay my 
seitan on the grill and get that nice and get the grill marks going on there. This is already cooked. You could eat it just like this if you'd like, but I want it to look more like a steak sandwich. So I'm just putting the pieces right on the grill pan and get it all grilled. And guess what guys, if you wanted to place this right on the barbecue grill, you can. You could actually put this right on the barbecue grill and it will grill up just like steaks. All right, so I filled my, green, my grill pan. This is what I have left. What I have left, I'm basically going to place it in different containers, um, separate the cubes from the, the, uh, the strips. Because remember, I have some strips in here. These are the strips that I'm going to use for pepper steak. And then this juice that's left here, this broth, I'm going to place it in a jar and we're going to use it as our vegetable broth. We're going to use it during the week when we're making our beef stew or if we're making any type of meal that we want to have a little bit of broth this is goodness right here in this pot you didn't have to go to the store and buy it this is our beef broth right here guys let's flip these over and see what's going on that looks delicious so look it fries up just like me so there it is it's grilled up let's get another one that's a little browner there we go so see, it cooks up just like meat, just like meat would. Let's flip this one. All right, so I want for my seitan to have a nice barbecue-y, saucy flavor. So this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, once I flip this, this is what I'm gonna do. We have some bulgogi sauce here. You can use barbecue sauce if you'd like. Um, you can use the teriyaki sauce if you like. I'm going to use just some bulgogi sauce, and I'm just going to baste my seitan just to give it more of a saucy barbecue flavor. This is like Korean barbecue right now. So you know when you go to those restaurants and they have you cook the meat right at the table? This is what we're doing here. We're adding this flavor right to our meat and let it just kind of grill up. Oh, the sandwich is going to be delicious. All right, we got our sauce on the seitan steak. So let's go over here because I have some fresh baked ciabatta bread that I got from the bakery. Got to have ciabatta bread. That is going to make the sandwich absolutely delicious. So let's cut this open. Let me get my bread knife. Ooh. So ciabatta bread is really nice because it, it's just, it has all these nooks and crannies. So let me open it up so I can show you. See all those nooks and crannies? All the juices are gonna be inside. Outside is nice and crispy, but inside is spongy soft. But, I mean, if you can't find this, you can use whatever bread that you can find. But this is gonna make a sandwich really good. So here we go. I'm gonna put some vegan mayonnaise on my sandwich. So I'm just gonna kinda get that all on there. Not too much, because the, the uh, grilled uh, seitan steak they have a lot of juice, but you know, you still wanna have that mayonnaise-y taste on it. Then I'm gonna go over here and in my bowl, I have some red um, onions that I just sliced really thin. I have some cucumbers that I sliced really thin and I have some romaine lettuce from the garden that I have sliced really thin. So we're just gonna place some of the cucumbers on my salad bread, all right? because I like cucumbers, so I put a lot of cucumbers on mine. I'm gonna get some onions, okay? And then I think at this time, we're gonna go over and grab some of our steaks. All right, let's get this one. Let's place that right on there. Let's place this one right on here. Let's get that one. And let's get a little tiny piece right here. I'm still gonna grab some more. I'm gonna turn this off because it's getting kind of sticky. All right, we're gonna go over here and I'm just gonna grab some lettuce just to get that in my sandwich. All right. All right, so let's close this bad boy up, guys. And just press everything down, get it all closed up. All right, guys, all right. tasting time. So let me cut that sandwich in half so I can taste it. So this is gonna be delicious. 
Now, make a sandwich your own, guys. Make it however you'd like it to be, but that right there is what it is. It's a nice, warm salad. I'm trying to press everything in so nothing falls out when I bite it. Okay, ready? Ready? All right, here we go. Mmm. That's good. That's really good. Y'all gonna have to give me a minute to chew. <laughs> that, my loves, is the ultimate sandwich made with seitan. That sandwich is absolutely delicious. I'm gonna finish this up for dinner. You can add, like I said, whatever you want to it. Add some hot sauce if you'd like. Add some um, vinegar and oil to it if you'd like. Anything your heart desires, just make sure you have that seitan in there. Thank you again, guys, for joining me in my vegan kitchen. I hope you guys try this recipe. It helps your meal plan be a little bit more diverse. So you have some, you know, diverse. You can have some mushrooms, you can have some seitan. Try a little bit. If you don't like it, you don't like it, but I'm sure you will. Thanks again, guys, for joining me. I'll see you next time in my vegan kitchen. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell so you get reminders for whenever I drop new videos. All right, guys, see you later. Bye.